CAM program, but um, as you can see, this was created just what what I just showed you. Um, I created before. I made a tutorial, obviously. This was using the third res version outlines with a vector blur added to them before trap code. So basically, I did. I made the outline, added the vector blur to it, and then rendered out its own version. So I had an out a vector blurred outline. Uh, clip to bring in a PNG sequence to bring into After Effects to use directly into trap code. Um, and then of course I did the I did all that on a low, low res version, did all the uh, the outline uh, the um, trap code part, the echoing, whatever you want to call it, um, with trap code. I did all that on the low res version and then I Pre-comp that just like I did in the other uh, comp using the echo effect. I pre-comped it and then scaled it up into the high def version. So all the effects were done on the low res third uh, resolution version, and I just scaled up all the the effect into the high res comp. So it went really quick. This was a really quick uh, comp to make. Uh, no waiting on the processing time. It went really smooth and quick. And as you can see, the vector blurred in there. I don't know if you can see from this the quality of the YouTube video, but you can see there's a, you know the bubbly vector blur. Each line is its own vector blurred line. And it's like an aura. At, even with her just sitting there, when she comes around the corner, I hope this runs smooth on the thing. Right here, it starts puffing off of her right here. I mean, especially on the shoulders, and, but you can really see it on the screen here. Um, like I said, I really I don't know if it's going to show up on the YouTube video or not, but right here, I mean, it comes off just like an aura would. So after you add the glows, you know, the glows and the overlay um, layer, after you do all your layering, the displacement, you get a really cool look, especially with slow motion. I had her play this part in slow motion, so this isn't even slow motion. Uh, this is just her pretending to do it in slow motion. So even when I slow it down, it even gets cooler looking. So this is just her pretending it's slow in slow motion. And you just get a much better flow of uh, outline when you do it that way. So try to have your actor move in slow motion. You'll get a really cool look. So, But this is kind of what the kind of thing you can get. And, you know, on here, if you wanted like this when she ran, this is just, you know, standard velocity. I use a 20 velocity on this whole animation but if you want like if she go like when she goes to run off you can add more of a velocity animate the velocity starting at 20 when she's doing this right and then when you go run off you add a greater velocity to have the trail even puff out even longer so you don't be afraid to animate your velocity cuz that really you know that can really change up the thing you know add some animations to your velocities and your uh, direction if you're going to go with a directional um if you're going to go with the directional version, excuse me, go ahead and uh, animate the, the rotation of it. If you go with if you go with an outward version, you can't animate anything but the really but the velocity and um, that's I th yeah that's pretty much it. It's just the velocity on it, but you still there's nothing wrong with the outward version. Um, but you know you can really get a good look, especially when you you know if you're working with third resolution and you add those, you can add more particles and really not have it slow down at all because it really runs pretty smooth if you're working with a really low res version that you're going to scale up later. And you can kind of see this is how you know what it was looking like, the pretty much the same settings I had for hers. But of course once you add the displacement, uh, it gives a better look. And uh, vec of course I was working with a vector blurred uh, outline. Uh, you'll just get a much better look uh, once you do all that. So um, that's pretty much it. You know, let's go with a full blur on this. You know, if you just want to add that kind of a deal, you know, just blurred lines, you know, that kind of gives a neat look, you know, just to have a ghostly image behind her. And it almost looks like a solid outline, but, you know, it has the, the in-betweens there. So, all right, one more thing I'll show you. Um, not really a big thing, but I'll just show you the super flight deal, how that's going to look. I'll bring my, my son in and another clip. So let me pause this and I'll get to that. Uh, before I get to that, let me just quickly show you. I just, obviously, I, I'm not comping this right, uh, you know, fully and everything with the blending it into my uh, front image. But I'm just showing you an example of more of more. This one shows it a little bit better because uh, it's just me stationary. You can see how the puffs are coming off. 
you know, flowing off the back here, and they're flowing up. So all the outlines are basically just being, uh, you know, driven by the particle. Uh, I just use, I'm, on this one, I'm using directional outwards, just because I'm stationary. There's no reason to go with direction unless I want it to flow a certain way. Just using 30 particles, velocity of 20. And what else did I change here? Just life per second is 0.9 on that one. And I changed my opacity over life uh, to exist a little bit longer before it fades out. So you see more of the particles flowing off. You know, you can go with full on, but then, you know, they don't, you want them to fade out kind of like right towards the end a little bit. So, you know, just, just play with that until you get just the right look you're looking for. And I used the add transfer mode on that one just to give the glow effect, just because it looks a little bit better just for this particular situation. And pretty much, um, you know, they're flowing off. And also, uh, this is flowing off, and there's going to be new motion created when my fist moves, you know, comes up. And you'll get more of a, an extension there. So this can be used uh, for, like, that punching scene in uh, Smallville. So, you you know, you're going to get an echo because I'm moving, my hand's actually moving, creating its own motion there. So, you know, I'm just, just trying to show you as many examples as possible in this one tutorial. I know it's very, very long tutorial, but, you know, you have to get all this information out. You know, as you can tell, I'm excited about talking about it. So, um, every little bit I'm trying to get to help you. Um, all right, let me quickly go get my son's flight thing if I can find it. And one more other cool thing. If don't look at the how the you know this is just using the add mode. It's funny how the skin color almost looks like a fire color. So maybe uh, if you did a solid version of this in front, you know you can use that as an additive layer and have a blur and stuff like that, make you look all heated up and stuff like that. That would be pretty cool. Just you know that's with a vector blurred outline, of course. Uh, vector blur definitely helps add to the effect of this uh, when it's vibrating and flowing off of you. It's really good to use the vector blurred outline version uh, for this. Don't vector blur it after trap code. Vector blur, just like in my uh, run trail tutorial, my Smallville run trail tutorial, vector blur the outline before it and bring it in as a new comp. I mean a new uh, PNG sequence and add that to trap code because you don't want to have vector blur uh, being used with trap code because it will really slow things down. I know I said that before, but I just want to make that clear. Get an outline made with vector blur and bring it in as a whole new PNG sequence for trap code to work with. All right, so here's the flight scene. Like I said, it works just like the uh, flight uh, deal, the echo thing, but it's much easier now. Just use trap code the same way and uh, just you know add as many particles as you feel you might need on here. Go with 30. Uh, directional, I'm using a directional. I set the rotation to 90 on it. And I just set the spread out a little bit just to, you know, mess the trail up. Uh, this way you don't have to add a turbulent displace like you do on the Echo one when I do the Super Flight tutorial. Because it kind of, when you use it the, with these set offset like this, when you add the displacement to them, that all bubbles up and it makes it look like it's got its own turbulent displacement to it. So, you know, this I just added the, made an overlay and glowed it a little bit just so you can kind of see the outlines real quick. I'm not going to go through the whole thing because, you know, kind of looks similar to how the, um, the, uh, aura or the flight tutorial looks if you've seen my tutorial on Super Flight using the Echo Effect built into After Effects. Pretty much the same, uh, look, but of course you can do more things, uh, using trap code, uh, a lot more tweaks and stuff. Um, Especially, you know, you do the vector blur thing on this, too. That even, you know, adds a huge difference. You know, I love using vector blur for these effects because it really helps give a cool look. Uh, you know, go with a longer, um, a longer, whatchamacallit, um, life per second so that, you know, the trail stays longer. You know, if it's going to be a really long flight, like up in the sky from the ground or something like that. Uh... You know, go with a longer velocity, or not sure. Go with a shorter velo a shorter velocity, and a longer. There we go. Life per second, and it kind of bunches the particles up, and you know that gives kind of a 
kind of a neat look. 